we talked about uh, a vital vacancy that needed to be filled. And that was Joshua filling the big shoes of Moses. We also talked about the raging river that it was necessary for them to cross under Joshua's leadership by the hand of God, of course. This evening we're going to talk about the evil enemies on the other side, as well as the divine directives that must be followed. All of these things apply to our lives today, as well as they did to Joshua's during that particular time. There were evil enemies to be conquered. There are still today evil enemies to be conquered. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all of the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. They're going to have to take it. And it is full of people. It's full of seven nations greater than they are. You know, with the exception of Jericho, the enemies of the land would have to be destroyed or driven out by force, physically removed or killed. Failure to drive out the enemy would result in future problems. We can see that today in our own country. With the exception of Jericho, the uh, enemies would have to be destroyed or driven out. And we know that that's going to be something that's going to happen with the providence of God. It's an unusual method of removing the people. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea Philistia, and from the desert to the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you, and you shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. That's a good reason not to leave them here. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare for you. Exodus 23, verses 31 through 33. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations mightier than you, and when your Lord God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Deuteronomy 7, verses 1 and 2. It's very clear that the Lord did not want these people to remain in this land because they would pollute the chosen nation. Consequences will follow if they do not follow those instructions. And we know that they did not. It's interesting out of the seven nations mentioned here, Palestine is not one of them. I don't know where the Palestinians came in, but they claim it from eternity, from the beginning. Not according to the Lord. Nor shall you make marriage with them. You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. Did they ever take the daughters of these people? Yes, they did. 
Solomon had about a thousand, didn't he? 700 wives and 300 concubines. And what did he do? He built idols on all the mountaintops around for each one of the wives that had a different religion. So they had a place to worship. With the exception of Jericho, the enemies of the land would be destroyed or driven out by force. That's a command from God that they do that. Failure in driving out the enemy would result in future problems. And guess what? We face enemies today, daily, in some fashion or another, that we need to rid ourselves of. We need to be sober. We need to be vigilant. Because the adversary of the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour you and he wants to devour me. Resist him. Remain steadfast in faith, knowing that the same suffering you are experiencing by your brotherhood in the world. We experience the same suffering everyone else does. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. If we don't keep ourselves at distance from this world, we will wind up like them with an eternal death instead of an eternal life. So we face these enemies daily in some fashion. He comes in the form of worldliness, pride, evil companionship, illicit desires, jealousy, envy, mockery, hatred, gossip. The list goes on and on. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all of that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. We know the source of evil. We know that it's here around us. And we know we need to keep ourselves apart from it. Failure to drive him out will result in future problems. Nip it in the bud. Do not linger with them. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbirth of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalry, revelry, and the likes of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Any one of these will keep you from the kingdom of God. In 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 through 10, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Not a single unrighteous person will be there. Do not be deceived Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, or sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rival, revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Well, because they, uh, they knew God, but they didn't give God the glory. Nor were they thankful. But they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. They couldn't even understand if they wanted to because their hearts were darkened. They didn't want to know. 
professing to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image of like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Idolatry. They worshipped idols. Romans 1 verses 21 through 23. Therefore God gave them up to uncleanliness in the lusts of their heart. To dishonor their bodies among themselves. And so we have a good description of America today. But rejoice, O young man, in your youth. And let your heart cheer in your days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these God will bring you into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart. Put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. In other words, we're all going to grow old, we're all going to mature, and we will all one day die. So we need to walk by the wisdom of the Lord, by his words. Pray and ask for forgiveness and wisdom every day. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. We have to remember the Lord is the judge and he is a righteous judge. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but then the righteous into eternal life. We have evil enemies that we must fight. Just as Joshua had a land full of them to fight, to take over that territory. And then there's these divine directions that must be obeyed. Divine directions. There were in those days and they are here with us today. Only be very strong and courageous that you may observe and do all the things of the law which Moses my servant commanded you. And do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Those were instructions to Joshua. There are also instructions to us today, not to deviate from the word of God, but to do what God would have us do. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. If you walk in the light of the Lord's words, you will have good success. Satan cannot snare you or trip you up or cause you to fall. Just follow the word of the Lord. You see, there was work to be done. There were battles to be fought, land to be taken, memorials to God to be established, all under the oversight of God's direction. He told them exactly what he wanted them to do, beginning with the crossing of the Jordan and setting up stone memorials, and by taking the city of Jericho in such an unusual fashion. beginning with the crossing of Jordan, they knew that Joshua would be their leader. And the Lord began to exalt Joshua at that point in time. You know, we have battles to do. We have work to do. We have things to fight against. We have souls to rescue. We have a uh, memorial to observe every week. And we have a commission to keep all of God's works and his directions and his oversight. We have a lot of things that we need to do. His commands are authoritative. 
We dare not malign his word or his will or modify his word. We need to follow only the word of God and walk in his light. For I testify to everyone who hear these words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the book. And if anyone takes anything away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life from the holy city, from the things which are written in this book. Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. In view of today's lesson, we are to be strong and of good courage because there's a vital vacancy to be filled. There's a raging river to be crossed. There are evil enemies to be conquered. And there's a divine direction to be obeyed. These things apply to each and every one of us today just as well as they did to Joshua way back then. In view of today's lesson, be strong and of good courage. You know, we've each heard the word of God and we know what we must do in order to be saved. He that believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 16. We know that we need to repent. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We know also that we must profess Christ as the Son of God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. Immersion in water is also a requirement for the washing away of our sins. Now why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And then the hard part is remaining faithful until the day we die. Do not fear any of those things which are, you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And you'll have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. How long? Until the day you die. Remain faithful. For those who are already Christians, prayerful penance, repentance is required as an action for an erring child of God, Acts 8.22. Therefore, repent of this your wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. If you need help, well, let us know. And we will help you in any way that we can. The invitation is yours while we stand and sing. There is